Okay, now I've switched to a densitometer that does both transmission readings as well as reflection readings. readings. And um, so this densitometer is now set on measuring reflection uh, material. So this is an X-Rite. And when I read the plaque that has a white patch on it, it's set so that you can calibrate it. When you press the calibration button, it'll read 0 0.07. So that's the maximum um, white that's being measured, and the de and the max and the maximum depth black that it reads. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, measures 181. Okay. So what it's doing again is it's shining a light down onto the material and capturing the light that's reflected off um, and then giving you a numeric value that where 0 0.30 equals one stop. <clears throat> if all the light was collected, it would read 0 0.00. But since uh, all materials absorb some of the light, you never get pure white on any reflection material. Um, when you use a densitometer for transmission, then it measures light going through the material. And that's the difference, okay? Now this is set on a visual reading, so it's, it's set for reading black and white materials. You'll notice that there's red, green, and blue. So it will read uh, through a filter, a red filter, a green filter, and a blue filter uh, when recording color materials for both transmission as well as reflection. But right now I've got it set for black and white. Now, here is a uh, contact print of the 21 silver step tablet as I showed you in the darkroom. This was made by contact. So, if I measure the pure white, I get a reading of 0 0.09. <clears throat> so, I'll start at a patch which measures 0 0.09. The next step over measures 0.11. So that's just the beginning of recording any density that this paper received. So that's the second step. I go to the third step on a silver step tablet. It measures 15. This is the fourth step, 24. The fifth step measures 38, 6. The sixth step measures 5.56. Seventh step, 82. Eighth step, 115, 9. 155, 10, 2.01. This is the 11th step, gives me 2.21. When I go to the 12th step, it's 2.27. And at a certain point, 2.28. So <clears throat> beyond that, you get more exposure, but you don't get any more density. So we measured about 11 steps. Now, this is made with the filtration that I use for my number two paper. So assuming that that's going to be, this is going to be my normal contrast, I can achieve a density range on the paper about 0.07. 0.07 to 2.2. Um, oh, by the way, this has been toned, selenium toned. Okay. So, in other words, <clears throat> I can get a full range of tones on this paper if I utilize 11 steps of the silver step tablet. I don't know 
you can see this, but 11 times 0.15 equals 165. So my overall density range should be 1.65 if I'm going to print on this paper. That happens to be my aim from pure black to pure white on this paper. And um, that's what I shoot for for every paper that I print on, whether it's Ilford or Kodak paper. My aim uh, is now 1.65. Now keep in mind that you can't see the separation here in the black. Only the densitometers can see those that separation. You can hardly see separation here. Um, but nevertheless, you need this range in order to get white to black. But the detail is only going to fall on mainly five steps. One, two, three, four, five. So again, five times point. 0.15 is 0.75. So your detail that you want in your print is going to be limited to a density range of 0.75. But beyond that, you're going to want enough density range to create your high value detail, which is your detail before it goes pure white and your deep shadow detail before it goes black. But the important detail is gonna fall within those five steps, each step being 0.15 on the grayscale, okay? So the reflection densitometer verifies what your eye can see and gives it a numeric value. Okay, now to finish off this first session, I wanna show you how I use a reflection densitometer in other ways, okay? And we'll come back to densitometer when we talk about masking. But right now we're gonna finish off by how I practically use a densitometer for my work. And what I've done here is I've made my own 21 silver stiff tablet. And as you can see, these 21 steps covers this large of a range, but you only see this. So I decided to make my own 21 step tablet, which expanded this. And so rather than go for steps of 0.15 in between each step, I went for uh, 0.07 in between each step. And it's not perfect like this. Um, but it was the best I could do. And I did it again and again until I... And many years ago in uh, the early 80s, I created my own transparency grayscale in a, in a similar manner. And when you photograph something that's evenly spaced apart, like something that's evenly spaced 0.15 apart, the film will record it like this. So you're going to get a degradation of steps and it will start. And so each step that I created had to have a reverse bump to it. And uh, so when I photographed it, it, when it pulled down the middle section, it was more linear. And that's a trick that I did in the 80s to create my own Kodachrome, Ektachrome, Fujichrome grayscales. And we offered that with our software. It was never perfect. So then I had to further modify the software to make it perfect. But that's another matter. Anyway, I kept that in mind when I made this. So this step tablet has a density range of 1.65. So if you, uh, let's see.
and if you measure the bottom step uh, oh yeah right I have to go to tr transmission here the, the clearest area of my step tablet measures 0.45 this is old film, it's super double X, 0.45. And the um, darkest step is 2.06. So 2.06 minus 0 0.45 is 161, okay? So my aim being 1.65, this is one of the uh, step tablets I made and then subsequently I made it a little larger and came up with this and this has been contact printed onto this okay now going back to reflection I want to calibrate that. I want to zero this again Now when I measure my step tablet, my print, I can get clear distinctions between all 21 steps, 22, and so forth and so on. Now it's clear that you can see all these steps here. At this point it gets fairly dark here. 1.74, So the last two steps of 208. So the last three steps are, for all intents and purposes, identical. But you can see how the other timer can pick up this much. Okay, now this to me is useful because I can see it. Whereas the silver step tablet is so abrupt that um, it's this is good for all kinds of material, but this is good for black and white paper and color paper. So anyway, this is the one I use for the most part. Now, let's take a look <clears throat> at the maximum black I can get on. This is, again, a multi-grade paper, um, untoned. Okay, so I'm getting a maximum black of 2.08. The same paper with the same exposure and development achieved 2.23. So toning it gives me a much stronger black. The white is unchanged. Same. It's 0.11. This is <clears throat> the Ilford multi-grade fiber-based paper. It's quite a bit more expensive. Um, the black here, 2.16. So it is definitely better than the RC paper, the resin coated paper. But when I go to toning, the fiber based paper, I get 2.3. So this achieves the strongest black. Um, and this is important because the black center print are the first things to go. <clears throat> I mean, in terms of fading. So, and I've done this throughout the years, I've made these kinds of prints. Initially, I used the silver step tablet, and I put a duplicate set in the window facing sunlight all day. And after a certain amount of time, I can bring 
that step tap it back in and measure it again. So just to give you an idea, the whites re remain fairly constant, but the RC paper, now this is uh, tested, the one that's in the window anyway. Um, okay, this is the multi-grade paper untoned RC. So this is the resin coated black and white paper. I started with 2.11 in June 10th. In October 3rd, it went from 2.11 to 1.66. Uh, Midtones changed from 1.2 to 1.04. Your middle gray, 0 0.69, only went to 0.62. So your middle grays stay fairly. Um, uh, constant, consistent. When I went to the toned multi-grade paper, started with 2.3 to 1.88. So you lose quite a bit. The fiber-based paper, untoned, went from 2.23 to 1.97. Your toned um, fiber base paper, 2.37, 2.24. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the wrong sheet. I'm sorry. Um, went from 2.36 to 1.95. So even toning uh, print will lose quite a bit of black if it's facing the sun consistently for four or five months. Now that's not something I would recommend that you do, but I do have prints that I made over 35, 40 years ago, which I framed, put on my bedroom wall. And since I've had access to a densitometer even back then, I know that in most cases, I started with a 2.4 black, and after so many years, it went to 1.9. The interesting thing is, um, when I take those prints and I rewash re them and I tone them again, I gain back to uh, two thirds of a stop. So 1.9 goes back to 2.1, and that's. The reason why I don't like to mount prints because I know that in 30 years I can wash the print again if it's not mounted and retone it and I'll gain back the black uh, two-thirds of a stop of the black that I lost interestingly enough when you look at these prints after 35 years they still look really good because you can't see these differences here so well with you with your naked eye. The densitometer can. And um, of course when you wash old prints like that you'll have to re-spot them. But spotting dyes are just dyes. They're not uh, a silver image. So dye, spotting dyes always fade anyway. So after 30 years quite often you have to spot them again anyway to blend it, blend those spots back into um, the surrounding area. Now What's useful about this is it gives you a standard that you can um, rely on. This densitometer. And so whenever I buy, I buy my paper in uh, rolls. Um, I buy uh, 40, I think it's 42 inch paper by about 100 feet. And I cut off what I need. And every time I order a new roll, I run this test. You know, I make this, I have the exposure, I have the light level, and I have the time I put in developer and I process exactly two minutes. And so I'm able to compare the new emulsion of black and white paper that I get compared to what I, um, leaving, uh, I've just used. And then I can see whether 
um, is consistent. In a way, I do my own internal check on Ilford paper. And you can do this any paper, but it gives you a, a ground base to start with so that you know that when you go to this new paper, maybe it needs 10% more exposure or the, fil um, the filter pack that gives you the density, the contrast you want has to be adjusted slightly. This is something we did all the time with color paper. Um, you know, and you have this master negative and you make uh, a color print shooting for gray and a new emulsion would require a totally different starting point. So it's something that I carried over into my black and white work. Okay. Okay, now the important thing to remember here is densitometer verifies the silver step tablet that is recordable on black and white paper requires a density range of 1.65 in order to get pure white to pure black. The detail is limited to a density range of 0.75. Okay. And if you don't remember anything else, that's what you, you'll want to remember because when in the next session, when I begin um, my version of the zone system, those are the aims that I'm going to shoot for. And um, so um, this is not... Um, that easy to get. I'm going to give you a lot of material in just a couple of sessions, but if you have any questions, you can email me um, and I'll try my best to answer them. Okay? Alright, so we're going to continue from, and that's the end of session one.